What's up, folks? I think today I kind of wanted to show you a little bit uh, of a, a neat little ridge line setup uh, that I think would be pretty neat. I haven't actually had to use it out in the field. Uh, in fact, I was reading uh, the Ultimate Hang, which is a pretty good book. If you haven't got it, you can check it out. Um, a lot of you folks that uh, know your stuff might even pick something up. Uh, if you're new, if you're new to setting up ridge lines, if you're checking out the video because you don't know how to set a ridge line, then uh, definitely check out that book. But, you know, there's a little something about some people, whereas they can pick it up good just by pictures uh, and, and uh, you know, reading something, I think video helps a lot. I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual kinetic auditory learner. So I need all three and I can really pick it up. But anyway, so let's get the visual part going. Got my tarp, my rain fly, got me some ridge line, and I'm going to be in using a uh, cam jam. But maybe if I'm feeling froggy, uh, I'll show you how you can set it up. Uh, not needing any kind of uh, uh, gear like this or any hardware. Uh, you know, some people really like their hardware. Some people uh, find it to be a little crutch and they enjoy doing their knots. Uh, we'll set it up both ways and see what we can come up with. All right, so here's the meat and potatoes part of this. On one end of my ridge line, I just made a simple, uh... all right, after sitting here stumped for a while, I think that's a bowling knot. I'm not sure. It really doesn't matter. Anyways, so I got one end of my uh, rain fly here, and I've got my um, my nice little uh, carabiner. I'm having a hard time with the names of this stuff. I have my little carabiner here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clip it on to this bowling knot loop, whatever. There we go. And what's going to happen is I'm going to come around my tree here. This is my tree. And uh, I'm going to go back through, right through the center of this guy, and I'm gonna go over the top of it. Hopefully I'll tell you why here in a second, why we're going over the top of it, so. I'm gonna ride around this bad boy. Let's go around this one. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go through my carabiner. I'm just gonna let her drop. Pull the rest of that junk through. Come on through. It just keeps going. Carabiners, you could still just pull it through uh, the hole in the tarp, the grommet. If you want to. Okay, it's going through here, and it's going to uh, wrap around, and pull the excess through around my tree. There we go. And this is where your uh, night eyes little um, cam jam is going to come in. I'm going to hook my cam jam to this. Carabiner, like a so, and then I'm going to use it for what it's for. I'm going to take the end of my ridge line, put it through the cam jam like it's supposed to be, and tighten her down. I have an excessive amount of uh, ridge line here, but I'm not really using much of the space. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to tighten this up a little bit. You can see that uh, she slipped down a little bit. She slipped down a little bit. But I'm fixing to show you the beauty of this bad boy. All right. If you, if you notice, well, let, let's get it up close and personal. Let's get up close and personal. So y'all can see this, all right? All right. So on this particular part here, okay, we started down on that end, and we went across the top, and we just went through our carabiner, went around our tree, came back, and here we're actually just going through our cam jam uh, just to make it simple uh, for tightening if you want to. And the cam jam is hooked onto the carabiner. So there's nothing real fancy going on here. It's not really complex. So that's what we got going on around this tree. We're going to come on down the ridge line to this side. 
Same thing's taking place here. Nothing fancy. We're just looped through our carabiner. Okay, we start off a little bowling hitch. I believe that's what it's called, or bowling knot. Not a hitch. Bowling knot. Bowline. Uh, onto a carabiner. You could have made some other kind of a little knot or toggle system and just went through the grommet if that's really what you felt like doing. So if you didn't want to use any carabiners or maybe you lost it. And uh, then of course we've gone up to our other tree. Now let's, let's, let's take note of something here. Obviously this is not a big, you know, uh, it's not the size of a tree, uh, nor is this other part uh, the size of a tree. But if we use our imaginations like we did back when we was like six, you can imagine that that's a much bigger tree here and that these are much wider apart. Obviously it looks pretty skinny here together, but if you can imagine being much, much, much wider apart, I mean, if we had a tree going on, we'd be right open. But the point of this is, if I draw this down, I look at it from this angle, you're kind of seeing where the V happens. Okay, and if you come to this side, you're seeing where uh, the V happens coming up along here. Now that's going to be important because when you end up putting a hammock underneath this, you'll have your hammock uh, suspension running up through here and then coming on up to your tree and what's important about that is that, like I said this tree will be much bigger and these will be farther apart so your hammock suspension won't be uh, in conflict with these and it'll be able to kind of spin around in there with no problem uh, same thing with this side uh, you also got your little V made here so and again it'd be much bigger uh, but let's go ahead and look at the uh, what's so cool about this is like a continuous line, or a continuous ridge line, whatever you want to call it. But uh, what's neat about it is it's very easily adjustable. And if I show you up close here, if I wanted to, let's say for instance, if I backed off here, let's say for instance, which we are, we're far, much farther to this side uh, than we are to this side, much, much farther. And let's say I wanted to actually center this guy a little bit. All I gotta do is come up here and pull on one side of this, and my there goes my tarp. Rainfly. She's shimmying on down. And my thing's sliding down the pole too. So let's tighten her up a little bit. Okay, so I've, I've tightened it up a little bit in hopes that uh, uh, my other side's my pants won't fall down while I'm trying to do this. But anyways, all I gotta do is pull on one side and it slides the tarp down the other side. And there she goes. Pull on her back. Just pull the line. And she comes to me. That way. This way. So very, very easy. Uh, to be able to adjust. So let me pull this guy, pull his britches back up. And uh, just kind of pull one side to the other, and, like we can pull this tarp all the way to us. And just adjusting it like that, and then see we're closer here. So uh, if we wanted to write straight in the middle, you just go back the other way with it. And then of course, you know, you'd walk away from your trees, say, hmm, looks pretty good there, looks pretty good on this side, I'm good to go. So a neat little uh, kind of setup. I really don't think there's anything more that needs to be said on that, uh, honestly. Uh, but what I, what I wanted to touch on here is you may be wondering, you know, why do you want me to put that on top and not so much uh, underneath this tarp? I was putting it underneath it. Uh, uh, number one, it's not necessary. But number two, if you do decide to put this underneath that, then you do want to put you some drip lines. Uh, because what will happen is obviously it'll rain, run down the tree, or maybe just on your line. It's going to come underneath your tarp and then has the potential to uh, a drip on you or, or uh, anyways, it's, it's, there's going to be water between you uh, and your rain fly and um, that just can't be uh, a, good, a good option. Now I have had these out on the trees out front, but it's freezing cold right now and uh, it works out pretty good. Obviously uh, this spins around this tree uh, much easier, or not tree, spins around this pole much easier than it would a tree. So my suggestion to you would be don't tighten it up. Uh, at first real good until you've made your adjustment back and forth in the middle and then I go ahead and crank it down um, to how you uh, see fit so basically you're just going to take your cam jam off you might just want to hold your line so that way uh, your rain fly doesn't fall down we'll just take the cam jam off and then I think it's just a trucker's hitch I think that's what they call it I know how to do them but I can't promise I know the names of them so anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back through here with my line, just through the carabiner. Well, I guess it wouldn't even be a trucker's hitch, would it? You're just going to kind of half hitch a couple times. So pull it back to your heart's content. 
make your little loop, tighten up as you see fit, and you can even, I'll bring you a receipt, you can make another loop, or another hitch, get out the way. And you can probably call it good. Then with that done, you can still easily uh, slide her back and forth. Yeah, which is pretty cool, I think. Pretty, pretty easy way to um, kind of get one back and forth. But let's check this out. So all I've done is a couple half hitches here. Nothing special, but it kind of uh, uh, takes out the uh, having to carry a cam jam, or maybe you had one and you lost it. Or maybe you set it on a um, log when the tide was coming in and the tide took out your cam jam and you got kicked off of the ship. But anyway, so what you, uh, th that's about it. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. You guys might want to check it out. Um, maybe at some point in time I can get it outside and get the old uh, Blackbird put up under it and we can kind of see how the suspension works um, going up through the center part here. But uh, I think that's it for now. I think that's it. So let's go ahead and call it there. Uh, maybe try it out, see what you think, an uh, easy way to adjust it, and then of course, once you've got your, you know, you may be concerned about it kind of going back and forth in the middle of the night, but it's not going to happen, because once you've got your sides tied out, then it's, it's in the ground, it's, it's not going back and forth, it shouldn't be going back and forth, and I can't think of any reason why uh, it'd be going back and forth, plus once you get her kind of tightened down against the trees, uh, that friction there is going to keep it from wanting to spin and rotate, but thanks so much for watching guys, appreciate it, and uh, I think what we got coming up next is going to be self-tensioning guy lines so that when, when you pull this down, uh, you can actually have it uh, tension uh, in case you've got some of these tied, uh, which uh, if it gets wet, they do tend to stretch a little bit. You'll need something to kind of take up that, that little bit of slack. So we'll see you next time. What do they call them? I always forget my knot names. That's the king of all knots. I call that a... Um, God bless it. What the heck? We'll sit here and record until I figure it out. I knew it when it was on the floor. Yeah, I did. Can't think of it though. Here until I think of it. It's one of them knots. It's a good thing I know my knots. It's wrong tip of my tongue. Y'all know what it is.